Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our webinar on digital transformation with Microsoft 365, which until very recently was known as Office 365. So my colleague Winnie and I, co-presenter Winnie Chung and I are uh, your presenters, and we are both coming to you from the safe and distant confines of our home offices. Uh, so bear with us if we get tripped up on any of the transitions as we go through the webinar. Uh, Winnie and I have worked together at IT Solutions for almost 14 years, and we've really been looking forward to this opportunity to present on this important subject for you today. A little bit of background on IT Solutions for those of you who don't know us. Uh, we've been in business since 1994, uh, and we service about 250 clients. Two thirds of the clients fall under the managed services and cloud hosting categories. We have another about another third of clients that are getting uh, app development support services from us. We've been involved uh, with the Microsoft partner community for over 20 years, and we got our first gold competency with Microsoft back in 2004. Winnie works with a team of 365 consultants at ITS, uh, and that team includes specialists in infrastructure, security, migration, uh, along with app and programming special specialists. The cloud solution provider program that Microsoft has made us a part of allows us to resell and manage our clients 365 licensing and tenants all under a single pane of glass for maximum efficiency. Uh, ITS is an employee owned firm. So our long-term success and growth of the business benefits the employees, all employees, not just a select few. And finally, our focus is on this region, the Philly market and the Mid-Atlantic specifically, and servicing it with the best people and processes we can provide. So that means we're not distracted by growth for growth's sake or other regions that could negatively impact our commitment to the clients here. Wow. What a different world we were living in since we started planning this webinar earlier in the year. Our purpose back then was showing the benefits of 365 could bring for collaboration regardless of where someone was working, recognizing the strong need for staying productive in the office as well as away from it. Then almost overnight, we went from a world where remote work was a sometimes thing with, for some employees to an all the time thing for all employees. So coincidentally, I think today's topic couldn't be more timely. Now more than ever, the way we work is changing. Even before the current crisis, most modern office workers were learning to adapt to a new normal. That is, they needed the flexibility to be able to work whenever, uh, wherever, and have the same, from wherever, and have the same capabilities as if they're in the office. Because of physical separation, ease of communication and collaboration is more important than ever before. The ta tailoring um, the most efficient way to work together is an inherent need for almost all businesses today. So you probably heard the term digital transformation uh, before you decided to jump on this webinar. Uh, it gets thrown around a lot in the IT space today. Um, we define it as um, cutting out as many manual steps as possible taking advantage of technology to automate and make work easier, do things faster, do new things, uh, engage with clients and partners digitally, and hopefully gain a lot more understanding about what you're doing while you're at it. Depending on your industry and organization or your organization, the specifics of digital transformation can look very different from one listener to another on this webinar. A manufacturer's needs are going to be much different than a law firm for example, as our specialty medical practice from a construction company. When we talk about digital transformation, what's the impact? So the specific impact that we see in the workplace kind of falls into three primary outcomes. Number one, uh, we see digital transformation bringing people, data, and processes together. Secondly, uh, we see it as a way to re-envision existing business models embrace agile ways to empower employees, engage clients, and optimize operations. And finally, disrupting technology to transform your company and create value for both your clients and your partners. So what are some remote work digital challenges and opportunities that we're seeing today? Well, for IT solutions, 
uh, you know, just two months ago when things got uh, started with with the current crisis, uh, we were doing a ton of uh, home network um, support and troubleshooting. In fact, uh, in the first week alone, our ticket count for this kind of work went up 200%. Uh, we were seeing and mitigating and, and helping with, you know, setting up home users and home offices. And big concerns for us, you know, fall under the, the home equipment that people, you know, are forced to use when they're in this situation. Unprotected Wi-Fi being a primary one. Uh, people being forced to use personal devices from time to time when they're not in the office, which is obviously something we strongly discourage, but not always under our control or the employee's control. Um, we've been seeing, and you've probably heard about, a lot of uh, health-related and government-related themed phishing attacks, uh, messages coming from, you know, hackers posing to be the IRS or the CDC or the WHO. It's very unfortunate, but it shouldn't be very surprising that uh, they're trying to take advantage of the current situation. And unfortunately, you know, people are, are stressed. Uh, and maybe looking for something like a refund or some good news from the CDC and they might be clicking something that they really shouldn't. So just, you know, be very careful, be very cautious of these types of messages that they're, that they're out there and they can be very costly. Uh, finally, in terms of uh, challenge, uh, we're seeing, not us, fortunately, uh, but we are hearing of other IT companies and, and internal IT departments, you know, in this rush to get people working from home and working remotely, rolling out 365 uh, environments or, or platforms or, or, or specific products uh, without checking all the boxes of security and you know leaving gaps and holes that uh, put uh, put users at risk and put companies at risk so you know if you if, if you're doing this yourself um, make sure you're following all the best practices that Microsoft recommends on a 365 deployment uh, and if you're not or you want help with it obviously somebody like us can can guide you guide you through it. So Teams, which we're going to be talking a lot more about today, and is uh, the the heart of the demo here that Winnie's going to do shortly. Uh, the the spike in usage uh, went from just uh, went up 55 million from last November uh, to 75 million active users today. So that's a huge spike. I'm sure you're seeing their their commercials on TV now, among all the other uh, remote workplace platforms that are out there. A um, couple of bright spots uh, in all this um, with our medical clients and probably anybody who's, you know, tried to go visit a doctor in the last couple of months, uh, telemedicine and telehealth are really taking off after a lot of resistance to it for years. Do you know, doctors don't want to get sick. Uh, I guess insurance companies are, are paying for it. And, um, and it's very convenient. And so people are, you know, doing online uh telehealth visits with their medical professionals and our clients are reporting good success with it uh, and and from what we're hearing from you know from actual patients it's it's a pretty successful um, solution and we expect it to grow quite a bit uh, in the near future so uh, we we have this slide that we have used uh, for a while now that is just a we like it because uh, it's a, it's a nice representation of the 365 uh, overall uh, spectrum of products. Um, it's informative, comprehensive, and kind of gives a good at-a-glance view of everything, you know, that's kind of possible within 365. Uh, just quickly reviewing a few of the most commonly used that, that we support and do a lot of project work around. Uh, number one, SharePoint uh, for sharing and accessing files on the go from, you know, a single location or a single tenant. Um, streamlining communications uh, with the feature-rich and user-friendly teams, which we'll be talking about here shortly. Uh, managers being able to make informed business decisions through a, a product called Power BI. Eliminating repetitive and time-consuming tasks and processes through Power Apps and Power Automate. And then finally, uh, one that we don't hear a ton about, but we're, we're is starting to catch on is stream uh, the video uh, platform you know within the Microsoft 365 family uh, we have seen it used uh, for implementing uh, video based training programs with a couple of clients so 
Uh, before I hand it over to Winnie here, just just a little bit more background on Teams. Um, it is a hub for teamwork and collaboration, first and foremost. Uh, it provides the ability to chat, uh, have meetings and calls, audio and video calls, all within the same uh, all within the same platform. Other 365 applications are deeply integrated within it. Um, which is really nice in terms of uh, usability, interface, uh, and you know generally just uh, the comfort of of, of knowing the uh, the platform. Um, it's uh, it's customizable, and we can extend it with third party apps, processes, and devices. And um, of course, it has enterprise level security, compliance, manageability, as you would expect um, from Microsoft. And then finally, it's built on SharePoint, which is the original Microsoft collaboration platform that goes back a couple of decades. So with that, I'm going to hand over the uh, the reins to Winnie here, and she's going to provide you with with the deep dive on Teams. Winnie, sure. take away. Okay, thank you, Jim. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Winnie, and uh, I hope everyone is doing well during this difficult time. Uh, can you see my screen? I just want to make sure you should be able to see a green browser with Microsoft Teams on it. You are good, Winnie. OK, awesome. Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, OK, so let's dive in. Uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, just like man, uh, Jim mentioned before, is the hub for teamwork that allows you to communicate and collaborate in a single and secure location. Uh, Microsoft Teams, you can think of it as a four-in-one solution. It includes instant messaging, online meetings, file repository. It's also a native integration with uh, all the familiar Office apps like Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint. So how can you get access to Microsoft Teams? You can get access to Microsoft Teams from web browser, just like my demo today. I am just logging into Teams from a web browser. Uh, you can also install Teams app on your devices, uh, PC, Macs, uh, iPad, iPhone, Android phones, they all works. And uh, as many people are probably like starting to adopt Teams right now, uh, let me just show you how I use it in my from my day to day work. So let's dive in. Uh, I will introduce the uh, interface first. On the left, you will see the nine dots. Uh, if anyone have uh, familiar with uh, Office 365, uh, when you see the nine dots, when you click on it, you will get access to other Office 365 applications. And if we navigate away, uh, you will see a left navigation bar on the left. You will see activity, chat, teams, calendar, calls, files, and the ellipsis, the, the three dots. We will go into each single, uh, every single of them, every single one of them in a bit, okay? At the top, you also see a search bar which allow you to search by the name or even by some of the file content. We're going to come back to this a little bit. This one is a pretty powerful tool right here. And on the right, uh, you will see your avatar, basically your personal icon. And if you click on it, you will see your status right here. It populates my status across the entire Office 365 suite. So for example, if I have a meeting scheduled in my Outlook, my team status will be updated accordingly. So if I have a meeting, uh, I will probably uh, set myself as busy or do not disturb in Teams so that my teammate knows not to hit me up during that time. Okay, so let's go into every single one of them. Uh, as you can see, there are some alerts right next to it. If I click on it, I see that now I have five feet. Actually, I never haven't seen uh, since I away from my desk from the last round. And as you can see, this is all the stuff that has been coming in. Uh, from, from my team members. And under the feed, you can also use a filter button if you want to. You can filter by uh, mentions, uh, reactions, missed call right from here. So the activity screen is kind of like a summary of what you have missed. Okay, let's go to the very first feature from Microsoft Teams. So chat, uh, I'm sure many people are familiar with chat. Uh, you can think of it almost like similar to Skype, if you have used Skype before, which is the previous product of Microsoft Teams. And uh, Microsoft is actually retiring Skype and transitioning into Microsoft Teams. Uh, this is just like the instant message on your phone. 
uh, chat can help you cut back the amount of the internal emails you receive on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, if you're looking for a quick answer, chat is usually my go-to now. Uh, instead of like, emailing someone, I'll just hit them up from the chat. When you start to use chat, uh, this contact list will grow, uh, will, will grow. And to keep things organized, you can uh, pin chat to the top, uh, so th uh, which you are using on a regular basis so that you can stay focused. Say, for example, right here, uh, right now I only have three contacts right here. But say uh, I always have instant messaging with Jim. What I can do is I can click on the three dots and click on pin. And as you can see, now Jim is get pinned at the top. So this is how uh, Microsoft can help you to stay focused uh, instead of like a long list of contacts. Now you can just focus on the people that you want to, um, to get, get your focus on. So I'll use Jim as an example. Uh, if I click on Jim, this is all the conversations that I have with, with Jim previously. And you can stop typing a new message. Uh, say, for example, now I want to set up a meeting with Jim. Before I hit send, uh, there's more feature in Teams. If you click on this format icon right here, it actually do let you do the formatting, uh, just like most of Word. You can bold something, uh, you can even insert hyperlinks to it, and uh, you can make things important so that it will catch the attention uh, when Jim got the message. And you can also attach files from here. And this feature right here, I'm gonna come back because this one is a very uh, useful feature. Uh, so you can uh, attach files from your local computer or even from your OneDrive. Okay, and when you attach your files, the files will get saved to the files tab up here. Okay, uh, let me just do a quick sample right here. So I'll upload something from my local computer. I will update a PDF, which I want to share with Jim. So once I click on send, as you can see, this is more important and then Jim will get my message. And see this PDF right here that I just shared with Jim? It actually gets saved automatically to this files tab right here. Okay, and this is where you can start collaborating. And again, I'm gonna come back to this in a bit because there's a lot more feature that we can talk about, about the files. Uh, to keep workplace a little bit more fun, you can also add emoji uh, or GIF or some stickers uh, to your to your conversation. And sometimes it's most efficient to jump on a quick call to resolve an issue or get an, an answer. Uh, you can also initiate a video call or audio call right from this screen. Uh, if I get to a video call, I'll actually, uh, Jim will get an alert from on his end and we can start a video conferencing right from here. So what we're doing right here, the chat session is, on, is a one-on-one -on -one chat. It's only between me and Jim, and no one else will see our conversation. But for example, if I need to include Garrett in this conversation, I can turn this one-on-one -on -one chat into a group chat. And all you need to do is just click on this people icon right here. You can add people, and then now you can start typing on that person's name. I will use Garrett as an example right here. And when I click on add, you can see that the conversations change uh, from a one-on-one -on -one chat to a group chat. Now Garrett and Jim is both in the conversation. And all the conversations that I have be between me and Jim is not included in here. So we're just gonna start a new conversation uh, when we start a new group chat. Same thing with the one-on-one -on -one chat. If I want to exchange the files, all the files will also get saved under the files tab right here. Okay, let's go down to the next feature, the Teams. This is where the collaboration happens. Uh, as you can see here, uh, I am part of a couple of different teams. And as an organization, you can decide if Teams should be department, projects, or initiatives. So Teams, uh, let me expand one of them so that you can actually see it. You can see I have like some alerts right here, which means there's like some um, conversations that need my attention. So you will see some alerts right here. So this, I'll just take this case 101 as an example. So the case 101 is a team. Underneath it, you will see the channels underneath the teams. So the general, 
client employment documents, these are all channels. So the concept of teams and channels, uh, let me just define them first. Teams, teams are a group of people that connected for projects and common interests. Uh, teams can be dynamic, uh, like a project, uh, a new product, or a campaign. Uh, they can also be ongoing, uh, like a department, or maybe a team, or maybe an office location. So again, as your organization, you can decide, and teams can be flexible. You can make it the way that it works for your, for your organization. And under each teams, for the channels, you can almost think of them like a subfolders underneath the teams. Uh, they are dedicated sessions within a team to keep conversations organized by a specific topics or projects. Okay, so I'm going to create a team from scratch so that we can see how that works. So at the bottom, you will see the join or create team uh, links right here. So if I click on that, it will give you an option. So I'm going to create a new team. When you create a new team, you will give you some options. You will see private, public, and organization-wise. They have significant difference to it. Uh, so private uh, is by invitation only. When you create a new team, and if you define it as a private team, only the members you are invited to will get involved in all the conversations and the files. Uh, the people who you didn't invite them to, they can get access to the teams. Uh, so this is different for public and organization-wide. Public, which means uh, anyone in your organization can join, which means whoever have your email domain address, like your company email address, they can decide to join. Even without your invitation, they can just join the team that you have set up. The organization-wide one, uh, which means that everyone that in your organization have your company email address, they will just automatically get joined to the teams when you create a team. So you have to be careful when you create a new teams. Uh, if you have any like sensitive information or maybe the project is not available for your whole organization to get access to, those should be private team. Something is like more organization wide. Like say for example, uh, it's a general office uh, team. Uh, so everyone should have access to it. Maybe this is the team channel that you want to announce or your company announcement, then they should be an org-wide team so that everyone uh, will be just included in that team. You don't have to do any extra work to, to invite them in. So for this example, I'm going to do a private team. So now I'm going to give it a name. Uh, I will say maybe HR. So only the HR team get access to it. So now it's time for me to invite people into the team. So I'll invite Jim. So all you need to do is just type in their name. I'll also invite Gary. And if I click Add. So now you get a chance to promote them to an owner. Say, for example, if I want to promote Jim to the owner, then Jim will become one of the owner. And he can invite other members to the team as well. But Garrett, as Garrett is only a member, he cannot invite other members into the team. So I'm just going to click close. And as you can see, HR is get created right here. And when you create a new team, it always come with a general channel uh, as a default. Okay. So under the general, you will see the post. Post is almost like the instant messaging that we, uh, we, we, we saw in chat. It's all the conversations uh, among the whole team. So by default, conversations with team members are visible to the entire team. So just keep that in mind. Uh, whatever you're saying in here, everyone in the team will, will, will be able to see them. A team can have up to 2,500 members across the organization. Okay, uh, this will come in handy. Say, for example, if this is uh, a HR site, right? If we hire a new HR person uh, to the team, um, then all you need to do you just need to click on the three dots and add member. Then you can add the new person to the team. I cannot add anyone else. I, I just used up all the quota. So, uh, so, but this is how you can invite new person into the team. Uh, the good thing about this is uh, when you add a new person, they automatically get access to all the conversations and information and files that have been previously shared within the team. 
This makes it easier for a new member to ramp up to a project. It is also easier for us as we do not have to think about which files or maybe emails or other info, information that we need to forward them to. So uh, say for example, if I have exchanged, like we are working on a new employee manual. If I include the new employee manual right here, I will use this work document as an example. And if I click on send, so everyone, Jim, Garrett, and the new person will see this message right here. And when I exchange a file, again, the files will get saved to the file tab automatically. Okay, and depending on your organization settings, you can also invite guest user. Uh, guest user, which means they don't have your organization email address. Uh, to join your teams. Uh, for example, maybe your client, uh, your vendor, or maybe contractors, you can also invite them to participate into the teams. So they will also be able to uh, join all the conversations and have access to the files that you decide to share with them. Okay, so every team have a set of channels. And channels are dedicated sessions within a team to keep conversations organized by the specific topics or projects. Um, as you can see right here, some of my channels are bolded, uh, which means there are new information in there that I haven't read yet. So for example, if I go in here, I will see that Jim has mentioned my name and then asked me for a response. This is how you can uh, get your attention because there will be a lot of conversations going on. But if I type in at and then put in that person's name, then they will get this special, special notification telling them that uh, I'm actually waiting on them on the response. Okay, this will make uh, this do make everyone's life easier so that it's easier to catch your attention right here using the at and then mention that person's name. And when you ask a question right here. Okay, so as you can see, I have like many channels right here. If I expand them, um, this list will get will grow long and what you can do is you can click on the three dots next to a channel and you can pin the channel so just like the chat when you pin the channel is almost like a favorite it will just jump to the top so that it can help you to stay focused on the channels so it also gives you an option say for example this uh, this project right here is expired is over so what you can do is you can click on the three dots and then you can click on hide. If something is not relevant to you anymore, you can just choose hide. Then as you can see that uh, case 102 is hidden right now, but you will still be able to get access to them uh, under the hidden tabs right here. Okay, so this is just like some ways to help you to stay focused. Okay, so at the top, let's go to one of the channels right here. So at the top, you will see different tabs right here. And you can actually customize this uh, to fit your needs. Uh, you can, all you need to do is just click on the plus sign. And this actually gives you a lot of options right here. Uh, some of them some of them are actually like related to Office 365. Uh, for example, you can attach a Power BI form, you uh, Power BI report, you can attach a Microsoft form, a PowerPoint presentation or even a SharePoint site right from here. Uh, the purpose of this is uh, so that you can just stay focused in Microsoft Teams. You don't have to navigate away from Teams and do other stuff. Uh, for example, right here, we attach a Power BI report right here. The Power BI report is uh, one of the Office 365 products. Uh, which allow you to connect to maybe your SQL database, uh, maybe Salesforce, or even an Excel spreadsheets. And then it will come put together, uh, you can like uh, put together a report uh, to give you kind of like a little glance uh, on the metrics of it. And everything is, um, is responsive right there. Um, if I hover over, you will see like more details on the report. You can do filtering and the numbers will change, the graphs will change. So Power BI is a really good tool uh, if you want to create reports uh, using your existing data, okay? 
uh, Microsoft also have a planner, uh, which is uh, coming becoming more popular. It's almost like a Kanban board, uh, which you can have swim lengths so that you can have different buckets. Uh, for this example right here, I set up like backlogs, to-dos, complete, and you can actually move the tiles over. Say for example, this, this, uh, this task right here, I just completed it. I can just move it from the from to do to complete session right here. And if I mark it off, it will just become a complete session. And then now I'm going to work on this next. So I move it right here. So this is a Microsoft Planner, which is uh, you can find it under the, uh, the plus tab right here. And it, this one is the one, the planner. So this will come in handy and uh, you can always rename the tab if you need to. And if this is no longer relevant, you can also remove the tab. OK. All right. So let's go to back to the files. I remember I promise I'm going to come back to this one uh, as we're going to. Um, this one is like very feature rich right here. So from here uh, under the files tab, this is the same file tab that you will also see under the chat. Uh, they work very similarly. It's just the chat is only between you and that person or maybe the group chat. Uh, for the teams, uh, all these files right here will be available to the whole team. Like every member under the team will have access to it. So under the files tab, you can actually create new documents from here. Say, for example, if I want to create a new document, I can name it test demo. I'll give it the date so that. And as you can see, the Microsoft Word actually get opened from within the Teams. And you can actually start um, working on your documents from here. OK. And if I close this, as you can see, the Word documents uh, that I just created get saved back under the Teams site. So you can start new documents right here. You can also upload files or folder from your local machine. Another cool thing is about the sync. You can actually sync all this folder to your local machine. This will come in handy if you are always on the road. Uh, say, for example, if you're at the airport and uh, you won't have Wi-Fi connection anymore. But if you sync this locally to your local machine, you can actually work on those files uh, when you are disconnected from Wi-Fi. So you work on it. Uh, after you pick up the Wi-Fi again, everything will get synced back up to the to the team site. So this will come in handy when you're offline uh, some of the time. Uh, copy link uh, is, is also a, a new way to share the file. Uh, I'm sure like everyone like is very used to uh, opening up emails, uh, opening up a new email, and then attach something, and then uh, email your colleague or maybe your vendor about it. Uh, but then it becomes like uh, it will be sometimes like uh, when you go back to your Outlook, it's very tough to locate that one email and very hard to locate that attachment right here. And also, you might also have different versions floating around because everyone is working on their own copies uh, out there. Uh, sometimes maybe people are working on an outdated copy. Uh, so, but with Teams, uh, that problem is solved uh, because right now, uh, if I share this, if I say for some of this test demo right here, if I select it and click on the copy link, if I copy this link right here, and if I send this link to Jim, then Jim will actually, uh, when Jim click on the link, it will actually bring Jim to the same documents right here. So there's like no more duplicate copies floating around. We're going to be working on the same document at the same time. And the whole team will basically get up to speed and have access to the same document. So this is another pro uh, comparing to attaching an attachment from your Outlook or from your email. Uh, so using Teams uh, will, will eliminate like those, those issues in, in, the, uh, in the future. So let's try to do a co-authoring uh, in Teams. Teams also allow you to do co-authoring. Co-authoring means multiple people can work on the same document at the same time. For example, this Excel document right here, if I open it and Okay, 
So if I open it, and if Jim also opened this document at the same time, I will actually see Jim's name right next to it. So I also have another browser open, uh, login as Jim, so that if Jim click on another cell, I can actually see that. So for example, if, if I'm Jim and if I'm updating this, you can see that the cell get changed because Jim is actually working on the same document as I do right now. So this come in really handy when everyone is working uh, remotely. Uh, people can still work on the same document at the same time. And when I close this document right here, all the changes will get saved back to the same document. Okay, so this is a pretty cool feature, uh, which you won't have from the file server. Okay, so as Jim mentioned before, uh, all the teams, uh, the backbone is still a SharePoint site. So when you save all the files here, you can also, also get access to them from the SharePoint site. So as you can see, you can open in SharePoint and it will just bring you to the document library uh, of this SharePoint site. Okay, so the next feature uh, in Teams is the calendar, which allow you to do online meetings from here. Uh, this is my uh, the demo site. So as you can see, this is a weekly view of all my meetings. And uh, Teams meeting can hold up to 10,000 participants in real time. And this Outlook calendar is also synced with your Outlook calendar right here. If I schedule uh, or start a meeting, uh, you I can actually schedule and start a meeting right from this screen. So I will create a new meeting invite from here. So great. And here I can invite the participant. They can be internal or external participant, like your client. You can also type the email address right here. You pick the day and time. It's just very similar to Outlook. And you can actually associate with the channel. So all the notes will get saved back to the channels that we have before. So if I click on send. So now I just create a new uh, meeting invite. Uh, for the Teams meeting in white from here. Okay, uh, I understand that like people are very used to Microsoft Outlook, so you can also schedule meetings from your Outlook. So if I open my Outlook, uh, if I go to my calendar tab, you will see the new Teams meeting button right here. So you can also schedule your meetings from uh, your Outlook if you want to. So if I click on that, I will get this. So just like regularly, just keep it the title, invite the people that you want to attend the meeting. And uh, when the times come, all you need to do is just click on the join Microsoft Teams meeting link and then it will bring you to the meeting. Okay, so let's go back to Teams. Okay, so let's see how we can join a meeting. So before joining a meeting, let me just click on one of the meetings right here. So I will just click on join. This is how you can join a meeting from Teams. Okay, so before joining the meeting, you have options to, uh, to turn off your camera and, or microphone, just in case you're working from home or maybe you're on the road. Uh, for example, right here, I can turn off my camera, I can mute myself, and especially sometimes uh, people don't have computer audio, uh, you might want to mute yourself if you are calling in because otherwise you you have a really a strong echo uh, if you have both turned on. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if you're calling in, just mute the microphone uh, from the Teams application. So I'm going to mute myself in case uh, there's going to be a big echo. So now I can click on join now. Okay, so now I'm joined. I'm just waiting for others to join. And from this screen, if you click on this people icon, you will see who has joined the meeting. So I invite everyone, but no one else has joined yet. So you can see it right here. Okay, so here you can, uh, you can still have a chance to turn on or off your camera. You can mute or unmute yourself. And this one is the part that you can share your screen, just like what we are doing right now. Uh, so that if you want to collaborate a content or sharing your screen with your client, you can you can do that from here. So all you need to do is just click on the share, and this will give you an option uh, sharing your whole desktop or maybe one of the application that you want to share them with. 
You can also initiate a whiteboard, which is kind of like pretty cool uh, from Microsoft Teams. You can actually draw on it. Uh, sometimes like if you think like drawing is easier to illustrate it, you can initiate this Microsoft whiteboard from here. If you click on the three dots, it gives you more options. Uh, you can record the meetings. And as you mentioned before, the Microsoft Stream, when you record a Teams meeting, uh, the recording will actually get saved to Microsoft Stream. And also, if you uh, kick off the meeting from Teams, uh, when the recording is ready, it will also let you know uh, from, the, from the Teams chat uh, session uh, when the recording is ready. Okay, uh, another cool thing about the recording is uh, they have a new feature, it's called the live caption. So everything, uh, you can actually show caption on it. Not only that, you can also search by the caption. Say, for example, if you miss a meeting and then you go back to, uh, to vis visit the recording, um, who wants to spend an hour and a half to watch through the whole recording, right? Uh, so you can actually search by the caption, uh, search for terms or even by your names to see if someone mentioned your name. Uh, then you can just jump to that session uh, based on the caption, and then it will play back from that point and on. So that one is a pretty cool feature uh, with uh, searching from the recordings. Okay, and uh, the other feature is like show conversation. Uh, sometimes uh, you can also uh, have conversations. Uh, if like, for example, if you mute everyone, uh, if people want to ask questions, they can do it from here. Or if you mention maybe a link, or maybe you want to share files with everyone, uh, instead of like sharing your screen, you can also do it from here. Okay, just always click on the paper clips, which allow you to uh, share a file with with your uh, with your attendees. Okay, so let me. This is how you can end a meeting, and I'm just gonna dismiss it. Okay. So this is the calendar feature right here. And again, this will sync with your Outlook calendar. And if you need to meet now, you can also uh, kick off the meeting right now from the screen right here. Uh, if you have the right plan, uh, the next feature is the calls. Uh, if you have the audio conferencing plan with Microsoft, uh, this call session can actually replace your phone system. You can actually make phone calls from here. Uh, it will also get you voicemail. Uh, you can uh, sync all your contacts from your Outlook into here. You can set up speed start dial. So this can actually replace your current phone system if you have the uh, correct Office 365 plan. Okay. So the next one is the files. Uh, remember uh, when we mentioned before under the Teams, under the chat, under the files tab, all the files will, get, uh, will be displayed under this file session right here. So if you want to search for something quick, uh, you can always just go to this file session. This works so much better than the Outlook search. Uh, so uh, this, is, this is why another reason we should like uh, using Microsoft Teams more and more is because of this search feature right here. Say, for example, if I want to search for cupcakes, which is one of my uh, content in my documents. So this is, uh, this is when I type in cupcake, it will search uh, across messages, people's name, and also files. So if I click on the files tab right up here, and if I click on this PDF right here, as you can see, Cupcake is inside the content, is within the PDF, but the search feature was still able to pick it up. Uh, not just searching by the file name, it actually searched among the contents. And it also, of course, it works with Microsoft Word and Excel and everything. Uh, so this is a pretty cool, a powerful feature uh, to use to search at the top uh, among with the, with the file sessions right here. Okay. So the three dots, again, you can add more application to your teams. Uh, we talk about planner. Uh, the shifts is more like uh, for people like controlling have different like shifts uh, in your organization. You can make use of shifts. Uh, one note, I'm not. I'm sure people are, are used to it. Uh, it's just for note taking, um, and also the stream, uh, which is the the video recording. You can also attach them into your Teams uh, so that you don't have to navigate away outside from Teams. Apps is all the third party apps that you can uh, associate them in Microsoft Teams. Uh, Trello, uh, if you are using, say, for example, Jira, uh, Salesforce, they all have like a third party, uh, third party integration with Teams. Uh, so that if you like look into that, that might be uh, helped you to to your day to day uh, easier uh, so that everything is like in one place. 
Last but not least uh, is the download icon right here. Uh, this one, because I'm using the web version, you can also download it as your application onto your machine. Uh, they work pretty similarly and all the features are pretty like equal. So uh, it's just a preference on which one do you do you want to use it like but uh, if you use it on the web you always have to get the web browser open uh, so that uh, if you're using teams constantly i would recommend you to download uh, that onto your local machine and again uh, you can also download it on your mobile devices um, remember we talk about the uh, the meetings the online meetings you can actually do the online meetings from your mobile devices if you want to uh, you can still click on the the join meeting link and you can kick off the meeting from your iPhone or on your iPad. So it works really great when you are like uh, working away from, from your desk. Okay. All right, so I think I just went over all the, uh, the features uh, for Microsoft Teams. Uh, if, you have, if you guys have any questions, I'm gonna stay behind and feel free to hit us up and we'll be happy to answer all the questions that you might have. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna send it back to you, Jim. All right, so uh, before we uh, wrap up here today, just some uh, key takeaways from, from the presentation. Um, number one, um, digital transformation is a strategic initiative. So it shouldn't be taken on without careful planning, brainstorming, and budgeting uh, with as many people as you can uh, get involved in the process you know, that are, that are uh, integral to your business or to uh, the area of the business where you're gonna roll this out. Secondly, um, it may go without saying, but it's not just about the technology. Uh, what'll be the impact to people, process and productivity if you go forward with digital transformation? If it's going to be company-wide, certainly if it's going to be company-wide then you need executive leadership if it's departmentally uh rolling out um or you're just kind of dipping your toe in and you um you just want to have you know a manager at, uh, at a departmental level that would make sense but if it's going to be a company-wide initiative we highly recommend executive leadership uh be completely on board and if possible uh you know involved in the you know in the um, key aspects of the rollout, the planning, um, the milestones that you hit, any, any interaction with outside vendors. Um, you really want that that executive buy-in for um, for a smooth transition and uh, for kind of long-term success. Uh, I think as Winnie pointed out, Teams, as you can see, is extremely deep and wide in terms of uh, how much it can provide, how many features, uh, and, and how, how pervasive it is, and how many things it, it ties into it and, and replaces in some ways, plus the integration with uh, the other Office products within 365, seamless integration. Um, so if you're not quite sure where to start, obviously, you know, our company, ITS, we'd be happy uh, to do a consultation. Winnie and I would be happy to speak to you and uh, get you rolling but also microsoft has a uh a planning uh document a playbook that uh that we'll send out to everybody that attended today and if you want to forward that on or if you want to get it for others just let me know it's a complimentary download from microsoft uh that ties in well and kind of helps you with thinking about it and getting something off the ground if you're kind of starting from scratch but we'll be sending that out um as we said, and I think it's clear, we're here to help in whatever way we can, whether that's just answering questions, um, giving you, you know, a personalized demo for your company or team, uh, to helping you plan, and, and obviously all the way through to deployment, as we've done hundreds of these over the last few years. Um, last but not least, security is comprehensive across the 365 platform. Uh, and we're uh, big champions of this platform because of how the strides that Microsoft has made in the last two years or so um, with really tightening up security compared to some, some other uh, products and platforms out there on the market um, and just how far they've come, you know, as a company. And um, so we're, you know, we're really comfortable recommending it and supporting it um, more than we ever have been. 
Uh, so on that topic, our next webinar, which is going to be, uh, you know, very much uh, a complementary to to the what we were talking about today, will be on uh, 365 security. So we're going to do a deep dive uh, on all the aspects of the 365 products uh, and not only you know the features of security but also the recommendations and practical tips for what you need to do to lock down your 365 tenant uh, and how we can help you with that so that'll be um, that'll be part two of, of this series and that'll be coming up June 18th so uh, look for uh, messages about that from us over the over the next few weeks or just ping us and you know let us know if you want to you want to sign up and we'll send you the info uh, with that, do we cover uh, bringing in outside guests into into the environment? Or yeah, we cover briefly co cover it. Uh, so basically, Teams allow external user. It depending on your organization, uh, we can turn it on or off. Uh, so some, I know I understand that some people probably think that oh, this is not secure enough, and I don't want people to sharing stuff with external user. So if that's the case, we can and uh, disable it. Uh, but we can also enable it if you want to talk to your clients, uh, share content with your contractor, uh, we can also do that. So it's either or. So it's up to you. As an organization, you can decide. Private teams by invitation only. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, private teams is only by invitation only. So uh, if I'm not invited, I probably don't even know that a, a team has existed. So private team is by invitation only. Uh, whereas public and organization-wide team uh, is public to everyone, uh, they can just join. They can join by themselves, or they will actually automatically join if you pick the organization-wide team uh, when you create a new team. Okay. Uh, when adding a new member, uh, what is their access to previous conversations? Yes. So just keep this really in mind: is uh, when you add a new member to your team. Uh, that member will see all the previous conversations and also have access to all the files that you have uploaded before. So that, that's how we kind of like help them to get them up to speed quicker. Uh, but also uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, if you're adding new one, someone new to the team, they will get access to everything. A company goes to 365, is Teams a part of that or is it an upsell? That's a great question. Depending on your licenses, Teams uh, is almost like including in most of the Office 365 licenses, uh, so you don't have to pay extra for that. Yeah, and almost everybody that we're we're doing work with for Teams is is already already has it in place, right? Yep. I don't know that we've done much of anything where we we had to start it, uh, you know, get Teams in place before we started. Yeah, usually it's easier to get adoption with Teams because uh, as you can see, it's like uh, pretty user friendly. Uh, so this is usually like the first step that we get uh, a company into uh, Office 365 uh, because it's easy adoption right there. Uh, SharePoint might have a little bit higher learning curve, but uh, Teams, uh, people just think like instant messaging and you can share files, it's just more user friendly. Well, I think that's about it. Anybody wants to get a hold of us through our email addresses. Um, happy to follow up as i said before with a you know one-on-one -on -one chat uh consultation uh screen share for you or anybody on your on your uh on your team <laughs> so uh with that i think we uh we've covered everything for today and we hope you can join us in june uh for the next webinar on 365 security so thank you everybody and have a great rest of the day thank you everyone